Hello guys, today I want to go over try the try function and error cat handling. Basically we'll be using what is known as a try block to try out a function or a piece of code and if that code is giving us an error then we can catch it using an exception. So rather than, it, rather than our compiler stopping to run our code it can basically parse it as an exception and then move on. So here is an example of a try of a try block. We use the try keyword and then from there we can run our function. In this case I wanted to print x. Now this will give us an error. Uh, let me show you why. Let me comment this out. Uncomment this. Now when I run this, it's an error. Oh wait, no, there's an indent. Okay, let me run this again. Okay, now there's an error because x is not defined. The value of x is never defined in our code. So, since this gives us an error, let me show you how we can use the try block to handle it. So we'll try it, it'll run it, it'll give us an error. And when there's an error, it'll go to the accept keyword, and whatever functionality we have in the accept, that will run. Kind of like an if-else statement. So let me show you. So this time, instead of saying x is undefined, it says it outputs the string we want, an exception has occurred. An, I mean an exception occurred. Now what's interesting about this is that it does not pause our compiler, like our code is still running. So even though there was an error, because we handled it, it will not stop the code from being executed. So if I were to use a for loop, after this, in the accept, even though there was an error, any code after that should run. As a matter of fact, let me just uh, get it outside. Uh, let me just uh, tab this. And there, it goes to our accept function, an error has occurred, but that does not stop the compiler from running and we can still run our for loop which is a piece of code after it. Now let me try this with the print function. Print x but comment this out. Because this is going to give us an error and we are not handling this error it should not run lines 8 and 9 and it doesn't. It basically stops right at line 6 because an error was detected. So that's the basics of a try and catch. And basically this allows us to create exceptions. So if there are certain types of errors that we can find in our code, but we still want to run the code as like a test program or you know just to test it with other people, we can use many exception blocks, not just one can even use multiple exception blocks for the same try block. So let me show you that. So it will try our same print x, which will give us an error. Now we have two exceptions. One is accept name error. It'll say a variable x is not defined, and then it'll say something else went wrong. Now, basically the name error is a built-in class, which I don't think I wrote notes on what it does. Let's just run this. Okay, variable x is not defined. Okay, I think I know what name error does. It's meant for errors that are built into Python. You can track those. But if an error is unknown to Python, and it's something that we wrote, the unnamed exception will print out. But in either case, it still runs the for loop after the fact, so it's just another example of how we can handle errors and exceptions. And we can also use the else statement, just like with the if statement. Well, we can't use ifs, but we can use elses instead. So here we have our exception, our try, and then else. So it will print hello, and when we run this, it 
prints the hello because there is no error, so line 2 is outputted because there is no error. And because there is no error, else also gets called. So it says nothing went wrong, and then our code after that also runs. But if I were to print x, this will give us an error. And because it does, line 4 was printed, but line 6 was not printed. And line 2 was executed and caught the error. But because we handled the error, lines 10 and 11 also ran. And we have the finally block, which will execute regardless if the try bo block raises an error or not. So let's just go over this. All right. So the finally should run, unlike the else, which only runs when there's no errors. If there is an error or if there isn't an error, it will run regardless. So yeah. It didn't work, line 4 was executed, something went wrong, but line 6, because it was meant to execute either way, also was executed, and then so was lines 10 and 11. But let's see if everything went right. So now there should be no error. So the print statement went through, but the finally block also went through, so it goes ahead regardless of an error. And then so did lines 10 and 11. This can be useful to close objects and clean up resources, the finally block that is, and the try to open and write a file that is not writable. Um, I think this was meant for my file handling video. Do I even have a demo text, demo file dot text? Oh wait, I don't. I guess this is a testing implementation. Well, let's try it. All right, I don't know whether I have the file handling video posted before this or after this, but in any case, this is how you would handle files. So I will try to open a file and write this text inside it. But since I don't have a file, this will give us an error. And if it does, it will print out something went wrong trying to write the file. And in either case, it will close the FIO. And then everything after that runs anyways. Um, let me see. Let's say demo file dot text. So in this case, it should not give us an error. Let's see what happens. Uh, no, something went wrong. Let me try this again. I have Steam running. Should probably close that. Anyways, let's try this again. Nope, something went wrong again. Hmm. Well, anyway, it's an example of how to catch an error. The program can basically continue without leaving the file object open and raise an error. As a Python developer, you can choose to throw an exception if a condition occurs. Throw or raise an exception. To, use the, to do that, you have to use the raise keyword. So let's raise an error and stop the program if x is lower than 0. So here's an example. So x is negative 1, and if it's less than 0, we can use the raise keyword to use the exception keyword, and it will cause this line to be printed out when an error occurs. And yep, now it's like a normal error, 
well it is a normal error but we can raise an exception and it will output what we want it to output so if you if you were writing a really complex piece of code and you wanted to output a certain error so you can trace back where the problem happened you can use the erase exception functionality to do so it's a very good way to debug your code and the raise keyword is used to raise an exception you can define what kind of error to raise text, text to print the, to the user and here's another example so this time it will raise a type error if x is an integer but if it's not an integer which it isn't it will raise an error only integers are allowed and yes a type error I think I went over this last time it's very similar to the exception it's actually very similar to the exception but yeah you can use either one of those to have Python tell you what went wrong anyways that's all I wanted to go over with a uh, catching exceptions and in another video I'll go over file handling if I have not done so already otherwise I will go into Python input how to add in user inputs in Python anyways I hope you guys have a good one peace out